thinking when we get here that, you know, I'm sure this is just He's home. wrong and everything's okay. But it wasn't the case. Police arrived at the Wetterling home within six minutes. But when Patty and Jerry got home a few minutes later... It was just chaos, absolute chaos. But the fear, I mean, you could feel the fear from Aaron and Trevor. And the small town sheriff's department had, of course, never faced anything like this before in such a safe little town. Did you get the feeling you wanted people to fan out and yes, keep going yeah, right exactly. now? Yes, exactly. We had to find, search the woods. Somebody took Jacob. I thought he was here. You know, he was just... It was just right here. This is some kind of a gimmick. Soon, police and neighborhood volunteers were combing the area. But there was nothing to go on. For someone who took so much, Jacob's abductor left very little behind. No physical evidence, no real clues. Just acres and acres of land to search. The boy was last seen wearing a jacket, a jacket over this one. Patty was told to stay home. What if Jacob tried to call? What could she do? In the hours after the abduction, she looked for her son, not out in the fields. Hang on, Jacob. But on the airwaves. I love him. And I know he's okay. They started playing Jacob's favorite song, Listen, which became a kind of desperate theme. I just want Jacob to know that this song is for him to hear. The heartbeat of humanity is beating for him. I know it will give him strength. And if there's an ounce of compassion in the man who is holding him, he will let him go safely. Listen, Jacob, can you hear our prayers? We love you. Can you hear the sound? But the hours passed, and then days. The FBI joined the search. The National Guard came. There we go. The manhunt grew to be the biggest in Minnesota's history. Out on the country road near the abduction site, police dogs sniffed out Jacob's shoe prints, followed them perhaps 50 feet, where the abductor may have forced Jacob into a car, and there the scent disappeared. They found nothing, not a trace. At home, Patty went to bed and pulled the covers over her head and thought that maybe she'd never get up again. And then she thought of Jacob. I just remember seeing him very vividly curled up in a ball somewhere um, saying the same words that I'd been saying. I just can't do this. It's too hard. They're never going to find me. And I began talking to us, screaming. It's like, hold on, Jacob. We will find you. But you got to stay strong. And, I, and it was a very conscious decision to get out of bed. What happened after that was the sort of thing most of us assume a regular person, just an individual, could never do. For me, the driving force was Jacob. It was Jacob and, and his, his voice I could still hear and his, his eyes and his expectations. And that's what kept me going. A stay-at-home mother, her son, finding results she never expected. When we return, the search for Jacob becomes a much larger mission. We need to look at who's, who victimizes children and make sure that law enforcement know who they are, where they are. How will this family end up helping so many others? And what will happen in their own search? NBC invites you on a magical adventure where a forbidden love... Armies are going to fight each other. ...starts an epic battle that threatens everything. Leprechauns, NBC Sunday in two weeks. And log on to NBC.com for your chance to win the Kodak Pot of Gold sweepstakes. It's me. 10 cents a minute anytime makes cellular affordable for everyone. And for a very limited time, get free cellular long distance. Call or stop by today. Stock's gone up. You should sell. 
The 1990s, the hottest decade ever recorded. Nearly every scientist who's an expert on climate says global warming is real. It's helping make our weather more extreme. Heat waves, droughts, wildfires, storms, floods. $272 billion in damages in the 90s, three times more than just a decade ago. Global warming didn't just happen. There are solutions. Find out what we can do. Let's start fixing global warming now. Chrysler Concorde, four-wheel independent suspension, and a powerful V6. I didn't know Davis could move like that. I told him to think of himself as something powerful and agile. I wonder what he was thinking. Now get $1,000 cash allowance on the Chrysler Concorde. Make the decision to become an organ and tissue donor. A family I don't even know saved my life. Their son died in a crash. Before the accident, he told his family he wanted to be an organ and tissue donor. I got his heart. I thank that family every day that I can be with mine. Be sure that your family knows your wishes. And remember, share your life, share your decision. For a free brochure, call 1-888-55-SHARE. Jake missing for 10 years on News 11 at 10. From our studios in New York, here is Stone Phillips. Returning to our story, 11-year-old Jacob Wetterling has been abducted from his rural Minnesota neighborhood. His parents are pressing for leads, hoping for any clue from anywhere that will bring him home. Their efforts are getting national attention and are about to take off in a direction the family never expected. Here again, Keith Morrison. Almost from the moment he disappeared, it seemed that Jacob Wetterling was everywhere. At a Vikings football game, in thousands of flyers, and searches, and prayers. Please come home. Please come home. Please come home. And above all, there was Patty. And what I need is for all of you to pray so hard for Jacob and bring him back to us. A week after Jacob's abduction, here was Patty leading a rally of a thousand people among them, Jacob's classmates. Yes, he had to feel that, you guys. He's coming home soon. Thank you so much. It's kind of like you're looking through a, a window, and everybody else is going about their business of everyday life and having normal things and gardens and dogs. And, 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 then, and you've got this, this, uh, this other thing that's going on that nobody else has to live. And it's just so confusing. You feel like you're losing your mind, really. They begged for tips for leads and got thousands of them and watched them go nowhere. They even took calls from people claiming to be Jacob's abductor. Sometimes a reported sighting sent spirits soaring to crash very hard landings. One day police found the body and they waited agonizing hours to discover it wasn't him. We lose him again when there's a possible sighting and you put a lot of energy into it and it ends up to, to go nowhere. It's like you've lost your child over again. As the investigation ground on, suspicion bounced around a thousand possibilities, even landing for a time on Jerry Wetterling, Jacob's heart-sick, worried father. He wasn't a real suspect, not for a moment, but people will gossip. And the police, to help put a stop to it, asked Jerry, would he take a lie detector test? I know that you look, uh, initially you have to look at the family in these situations. You know, it had to be done and it was okay, but just my emotional state was not the greatest at that point. And there was still no Jacob. Weeks turned into months and the months became years and still Jacob's hope stayed in lights on the Wetterling family garage in spite of this grim truth. If a child abducted by a stranger isn't found in the first few hours or a day or so, the chances he'll be returned at all are infinitesimally small. What was to be gained by going on hoping? Well, as it turned out, quite a lot. It doesn't happen because you sit back with your feet up on the couch and gee, you know, gee, I hope, I hope he comes home today. 
I view hope as an action word. So act she did. Perhaps because such abductions are so rare, there were few places to go for help. So she co-founded the Jacob Wetterling Foundation, dedicated to helping find Jacob and all the other missing children. She took her son's story all over the country. She spoke with students. Tie a ribbon on your antenna to let the whole world know that this is something you believe in. It was Patty who demanded the politicians listen, who insisted they must do something about missing children. I didn't want to make it to D.C. without stopping and at least saying hi. And reminded law enforcement officials of the importance of following every lead. But typically, somebody knows something, and that's the piece that we're begging for still. She was so personal. She touched people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Talking of the little boy who was once a goalie on the ice hockey team. I asked him one time, didn't it bother you when, um, when it went in? And he said to me, well, not really. If, if I stopped it, it was a great save. If it went in, that was a great shot. <laughs> Remember, this was a small town, stay at home, mother of four. Just a regular person with a terrible problem. And yet, this regular person spearheaded the passing of the Jacob Wetterling Crimes Against Children Registration Act, a federal law requiring convicted sex offenders to register their addresses with police once they're released from prison. There was the president in 1994 signing into law an act that Patty helped create. I think we need to look at who's, who victimizes children and make sure that law enforcement know who they are, where they are, and I know this has happened, where they've retrieved children from the hands of a very bad person who intended to kill this child, but they did it because they had those tools. And maybe they had those tools because of Jacob. I believe they had those tools because of Jacob. Does she hate them, sex offenders? Does she hate the man who took her son? Do you know the person you took? She wrote him a letter, born, whoever he is. This is he part of it. I wonder, were you ever like Jacob? Did you also love peanut butter? Did you sneeze when you looked at the sun? You've held the answers for so long. You also hold the pain. Please talk to me. Why do you want to talk to him? I just wanted to know. You know, what was he thinking? What, was, what were you thinking when you took this boy from us, you know? What were you even thinking? I want to know I want to know where Jacob is. What should happen to this person? I think this person is probably living in hell. I think this person needs to, to be caught and, um, and held responsible for his behavior. He needs to be in a place where he can't harm another child. But that's all I know. I don't, I'm not a death penalty person. I, I couldn't ever kill. Even after this? Even if the worst has happened? Couldn't do it. And I hope that he couldn't do it either. <laughs> and now, every day, Patty and her family must pass by the very spot from which she disappeared now 10 years ago. Sometimes she says she comes out here because she wants to, just to think, if nothing else. Seasons have passed, but the Wetterlings have remained. While Patty ran up accomplishments for child safety no one dreamed of in those first terrible days. Why now does she stay here? For the one thing she'd trade everything else to see. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll go sit on that couch and look out the window and half of me expects him to come running up the driveway. Don't know why. If he did, would Patty recognize him? They've made age-enhanced photos, but they aren't sure what he might look like today. There was a lot to think about at Jacob's 21st birthday earlier this year. What would we be buying him? What does a 21-year-old have on their wish list? What, uh, would he have a girlfriend? What, I don't know. And it's hard. Patty still keeps in close contact with the sheriff's department. He bakes them cookies still, especially on a day like today. You can't be bitter and angry and hostile and bake chocolate chip cookies at the same time. 
So far, the investigation has generated more than 23,000 leads, 10 years, and still looking. Because, she tells us, he may still be there. And how would she feel? How would he feel if she gave up? What if he was alive and you just kind of stop? I knew that I could never look him in the eye and say, geez, Jake, you know, I just couldn't do it anymore. I could never do that. Today is the 10th anniversary of Jacob Wetterling's disappearance. His mother says she draws strength from successful cases where a child does come home after a long absence. If you think you have information about Jacob or about any missing child, or just want tips on keeping your kids safe, you can call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST, or log on to our website. The address is dateline.msnbc.com.